I'm an engineer. When I was a kid, I used to take things apart just so I could figure out how they work. And sometimes I put those things back together. This is the engine from my 1971 MGB that I had when I was a teenager. When I was 16 years old, it blew a head gasket. So one afternoon after school, I took it apart, and fixed it, and put it back together. It was a very satisfying experience. I'll never forget it. A lot of engineers have similar stories of their childhood of taking things apart to see how they work. Um, I should also point out, I don't have a picture of my girlfriend from this era. <laughs> now, uh, when I, later on, when I went to university to study engineering, I started learning all sorts of equations like these that govern physical processes. These equations govern the flow of fluids, and as you can see, NASA engineers use very sophisticated computer algorithms and large supercomputers to figure out how air flows over the space shuttle. Essentially what they're doing is solving these equations. Towards the end of my studies, I found out that I could use these same equations to study the flow of fluids around the human body. Now most of us, when we think about flow of fluid around the body, we think of blood flow, so here we have the heart sending blood out into the arteries. It's going out into the tissues, coming back in the veins. Now that's a very important thing to do because we're large multicellular animals and we need to transport oxygen and nutrients to those tissues. Now at the capillary level where this process occurs, there's a net leakage of fluid, mainly water, and proteins out into the interstitial tissue space or those spaces in between the cells and the tissues of our body. Now if we didn't have a mechanism for collecting all that fluid and returning it to the cardiovascular system, we would blow up like a balloon and die of malnutrition. That important job is the job of the lymphatic system. There are not many people that study the lymphatic system. So that's what makes my bio, one of the things that makes my biomechanics group unique. Uh, this is a rough schematic of the lymphatic system. As you can see, it's laid out in a very different way than the arteries and the veins. For one thing, there are no lymphatics in the brain. The job of fluid balance in the brain is, is handled by another system. So the lymphatic system collects all of this fluid from the interstitial tissue space, those proteins. If you've had a cut, it'll collect dirt and debris. Whatever's floating around in that space gets pumped into the lymphatic system and take return to, the, to a vein in your shoulder here. On its way to the vein, that lymph, as we call it, that fluid passes through at least one lymph node. Lymph nodes have very important immune cells located in them that help us deal with that dirt and debris and other things that might harm us. Another thing that happens with the lymphatic system is that when cancerous tumors start to grow, some of the cells come off of those cancerous tumors and go into the interstitial tissue spaces. Those also get taken up by the lymphatic system, and if they get past lymph nodes, they can go and set up tumors in other parts of the body. That's often a very bad event in the development of a patient's cancer. Now you all know that cancer is a big health problem. I'm not going to stand up here and give you a bunch of statistics. If your mind works like me, you would forget the numbers by the end of the talk. That's okay. What's important to remember is that behind those numbers are people. So I'm just gonna tell you about a couple of the people. This is my friend AJ. I played ultimate frisbee, this crazy sport with, this, uh, with AJ. And as the picture implies, AJ lived in a very sunny place and had a very light complexion. He started developing skin cancers, unfortunately, on his back and his shoulders, and some of the cells from those tumors made it into his lymphatic system, spread to other parts of his body, and he died around the age of 40. It's a horrible tragedy. He was a prince of a guy, a great athlete, and I miss him a lot. This is another ultimate Frisbee friend of mine on the right. His name is Jay Leon. Jay suddenly collapsed at about the age of 30 into a seizure because, unbeknownst to him, he had a tumor about the size of a golf ball in his brain. Now, I told you earlier, there are no lymphatics in the brain. In fact, brain tumors very rarely spread to other parts of the body. The most deadly forms of cancer, skin cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, all of these cancers spread through the, through the lymphatic system. This is a huge problem. There's another problem associated with the lymphatic system in cancer, and that's this. This is a breast cancer patient who has undergone surgery to remove the tumors from her breast. And in the process, the surgeon has taken out some of the lymph nodes from under her arm. Now this is done to prevent the, the spread of cancer to other parts of the body. 
which sounds like a good thing, but it also removes one of the main drainage pathways from the arm back to the shoulder. So the fluid is not being moved out and this condition, which is called edema, develops. It's painful, debilitating. Clearly these patients have been through enough already. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no cure for this condition. I'm a fluid mechanics engineer and I want to solve that. That's my dream. So how do I do it? I take the system apart to see how it works. This is an individual lymphatic vessel here, right down the middle. You can see these cells going through here. These are very important uh, immune cells that go all over your body, distributing memory of previously encountered pathogens. On either side of this vessel is, sorry, that, that's not spinning around the way it should. Uh, over here is, uh, is an image of a check valve. So on either side of this image here are check valves that keep the flow going in the right direction. So essentially, you squeeze, and then one check valve closes, the other one opens, and fluid moves in the right direction. Using some of the same computer technology that NASA engineers use to look at airflow over the space shuttle, we can model the flow in these check valves. And you can see some of the results of that here. So we've taken the system apart. We figured out how it works, mostly. Now we need to start reassembling it. The way we do that is shown in this schematic. We have some equations that describe the way the cells in the lymphatic walls talk to each other. We have the equations for the fluid flow in the vessels. We have equations that describe the valves. We build these up in series, one after the other. We build these up in parallel with each other. And eventually, we have a network of the lymphatic system. Now, so what's the challenge with that? Well, the challenge is actually built into the background of my slides. This is the lymphatic network of one small part of a human liver. You can see how many vessels there are here. The equations that we use to describe the lymphatic system are so complex that at this point, all we can describe is about that much right there. Clearly, this is a huge challenge to try and describe this, the, to, to try and model this entire system. So the question I will leave you with this evening, to paraphrase Bob Dylan, how many vessels must an engineer model before a disease can be healed? The answer, my friends, is fluid in the lymph. Thank you.